Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. So today we have a review of, um, well, it's complicated, but there are, I guess, two things we're going to kind of look at today. One is we're going to look at this vintage True Point pencil pointer. And a shout out to my buddy Gary, who came across this. And I now, gosh, I can't remember Gary where you said you found it, but in his, <laughs> in the course of his travels, he came across this, and he thought of me, and I am so totally appreciative of that, and um, thought this might be something that I would be interested in. And uh, not only did he have the pointer, but this little tin here of true point um, abrasive um, refills for the pointer. So we have that. Now, in order to really try this, we need to have a, a point to a pencil point to, to, to sharpen, to put a point on. Uh, and so, you know, these were really meant for, um, I guess artists would use them, but I remember my father, who was an engineer, having one of these. And I think that this was more uh, for draftsmen and engineers uh, and uh, at a time of course before the digital age when things were done um, by hand uh, and things were designed um, on a piece of paper uh, and so there was um, great use of pencils of different values and different types to do these drafting jobs. So let's just take a look and get into it. First, uh, you just got to love the box. It's, it's red and it has a silver printing on it. True Point Pencil Pointer produces long, slender, true needle point for fine line works of all kinds. I'll turn it here. True Point Pencil Pointer. Durable, practical, clean. Designed primarily for pointing leads of draftsmen's mechanical pencils, although it will also point leads of wood pencils after the wood has been cut back by either a machine or a knife. Okay. For draftsmen, engineers, artists, accountants, etc. Produces long, slender, true needlepoint for fine work of all kind. So there it is. So there's the pointer. It's in this box. And then this uh, t looks like three abrasive refills for the true point lead pointer. And here, instructions to remove old liner, insert pen knife for any pointed instrument between liner and metal cup, and gently pry out. Wipe inside of cup clean with a cloth or tissue paper, and press new liner firmly into place. Press with thumbs on top of liner, not inside. When replacing cover, you will note grinding cup is pulled to one side. Place pencil guide in the middle, I think, open space. Anyways, so there it is. And I'm gonna, so it's in this metal can and it had some plastic. These are probably in between. There's only one in here. 
Uh, and if you look, you can probably see, because it's sparkling from the light, it's basically a rolled piece of sandpaper. Mm. I would say <clears throat> on the fine, the grits on the finer side, um, <clears throat> but it's specifically cut and shaped to fit inside of this pencil pointer. Um, really cool, really cool. So put this aside. Kind of, so here's the pencil pointer, and I will tell you, it's heavy. Um, it is a heavy piece of equipment. Even though it is small, it weighs a few pounds. But again, it was meant to sit on the top of a desk or a drafting table and for you to be able to, you know, for it to not move around, although I think you'd probably want to hold it as you moved it. So let's, I'm going to And hold on a minute, before I go any further, there is actually something in the box here. Look at this. True Point Lead Pointer, manufactured by the Elwood Manufacturing Company, Coloma, Michigan, on Baker Street. So, right here in Michigan. Um, and... This pointer is for pointing leads only for mechanical or wood pencils normally used by draftsmen, engineers, accountants, artists, or anyone who does a lot of pencil work and enjoys a fine point. This pointer does not cut the wood from wood pencils. Sorry about that. But it does keep a sharp point on the lead after the wood has been cut back with a knife or a draftsman's special wood cutter. To operate, simply insert the pencil into the pencil guide provided on the cover using some pressure until it decidedly hits bottom. Then rotate the cover slowly with the pencil, not the guide, in a most natural manner. Okay. Do not twist or twirl the pencil with the fingers. The mechanism inside will take care of the true pointing without any effort on your part. A natural writing grip on the pencil close to the top of the pencil guide is best. This pointer will point a lead up to a half inch long without breaking the lead. And then to clean, empty it of lead dust or grindings, remove the cover, dump. Um, do not disturb any of the inside mechanism um, to ensure free operation of the cover on the post bearing. It is necessary that at least once a month the post bearing be wiped clean of any lead dust and a very small amount of lubricating oil be applied to the bearing. Do not allow any oil to reach the parts of the bottom of the machine. Insert a new abrasive liner, which are the little ones there. Tells you how to do that. Um, well, here it is. Due to the broad range of uses for which this pointer is readily adaptable, the user should make a study of the approximate number of turns required for pointing pencils for his particular needs. It will point from blunt to hairline needlepoint. The average number of turns required is from 2 to 5, depending on the sharpness of the point desired. Patent number printed in USA. Amazing. So there was some little company in a little town, believe me, Coloma is a small town, and this is what they did. They made this. Let me, let me adjust the light. I really want you to be able to really see this thing as good as you can here. Okay, so here's the pencil guide. I've taken, taken that off. I'm going to pull this. There we go. Okay, here's the underside of the pencil guide. So this is just die cast metal here. Has the patent number on the underside. 
And then here's the inside of the mechanism. And you can see how this thing rotates like that sort of oscillates around the pencil point. Now, it doesn't have a lot of shavings, or let's see, well, how about that? I guess I shouldn't say. Not bad. I don't know when the last time this thing was emptied, let alone used. Um, I had a feeling I'd make a mess, and it's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, but interesting. So you've got hmm, really amazing. You know, here's some engineering right here. Like I said, this is all I guess you'd call it pot metal on the outside or it's it's heavy. Now that inner this little goes in would go a new one would go in here there is one in there I can see it and I can I can feel it look at that so it has been certainly used I uh, hold on I have a rag here because my hands are already filthy dirty um, so I'm going to not put a new one in but I only have one here anyways, so I'm going to save that. But uh, it certainly feels like there's, there's a fair amount of grit still on the one that's currently in there. So that's the internal part of the mechanism. We will put this back on. There it goes. And again, this is how it turns. And we will put that back on. Okay, so there's our screw point pencil pointer. Now, to demonstrate, I'm going to use this. And let me, before I get this all over me, This is what I'm going to use. This is a lead holder. Um, I guess it is a mechanical pencil of a type. Again, this has a this is a two millimeter lead, but you can see maybe you can't. Come in a little bit here to focus. See that? That is what holds the lead. Now this already has a point in it, so I'm going to actually turn it around and so that we come out with the blunt end here. like so, so we can put a point on that. This is a Koinor Versatile 5900. Um, been around for a long time, this design. Uh, I don't believe this comes off. No, there's no eraser or anything underneath. Uh, it's kind of a classic design at vintage. You'll see uh, I don't know with this light if it will really pick it up well. I'm going to try. On the pocket clip, it's embossed. It says Koinor. There it is. It has a gold imprint. It is hexagonal. It is plastic and metal. It has a small plunger on the top. It's got this sort of cream colored. Uh, and gold band at the top uh, and then here is the lead crimper holder and 
and you can see what happens as I as I depress it, it it releases the lead so it doesn't advance it per se it just releases it it's just holding it let me and I can't remember what core value this this is feels like an HB or an H to me. Anyways, um, so let's do this. I'm going to get some of this lead. It would said it would put a point up to a half an inch. So let me put a fair amount here. Okay, I'm inside. One, two, three, four, five turns. You can see it's starting to kind of taper at the end. It hasn't really given me the point I want. Let's go another five better. Perhaps the sanding disc on the inside is a bit worn. But here we're finally getting there to the point, yes, that I want. Doing kind of five at a time here. Nice. Look at that. There. That's the point. So, this is how the draftsman would get that point on their mechanical pencils, their, their lead holders, or um, if they used a wood pencil, I can you can see this is a fairly narrow opening and going into it you really would have to um, bring the wood back quite a bit uh, from the, the core to do that. But um, Gary, thank you. This is a cool gift and I mean what I love is it's got the instruction manual, it's got the box, it's got the the refill, the whole thing. Um, really a great, frankly, piece of analog history. Um, I, these things aren't made anymore because they're not used. Um, and unfortunately, the people who use them uh, there are not many of them around, and uh, this is not how things are designed generally now. And so these are artifacts of uh, a different time. Um, they're beautiful, and I love the fact that it was made here in Michigan too. So, anyways, thank you all for um, spending some time with me. I hope uh, you enjoyed this look at this vintage pencil pointer. Uh, it was fun to, to try out. And please subscribe and share and hit the like button if you're so inclined. And I look forward to seeing you again soon here on Always Analog.